Hey guys, welcome back to the fifth episode of our Pericles Let's Play. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you're liking this content. And also be sure if you guys have missed the earlier episodes, go into the card above. Uh, it should be up here uh, for earlier episodes if you've missed those. Uh, and let me know down in the comments what you liked most about this episode. We're going to wrap up the rest of the game here, so sit back and enjoy. Hey guys, GMX here and welcome back to our Let's Play as uh, Pericles of the Greek Empire. We are going for a culture win here. We are getting up Renaissance walls, things like that. Um, and we are getting ready to get a bunch of national parks in our uh, in our cities. Uh, we're building some cities as well that will be some uh, national park generators like up here. Um, so let's get right into it. Choosing our civic, let's go ahead and go straight for that conservation. I think that's going to be great for us. That way we can start getting our builders up. Uh, choosing some production here in Sparta, we could actually use something for housing. Mm, let's see. I think in this scenario, a amphitheater would help me out the most because I will be able to put great works of writing in there as well as get up things like art museum and uh, archaeologists and uh, archaeology museum so I can get some artifacts in there. So in our city of Seth, we have currently Liang as an established governor. She has the uh, ability Guildmaster, which all builders get one plus one charge. And since we are working on conservation right now, we have 12 turns for that. What we're going to be doing is getting up our, uh, after this trade, we're going to be getting up tons of builders, actually. That way we can start spamming out things like woods and stuff. That way we can get these national parks up a lot quicker. All right, we actually had a successful stealing of tons of gold here from the city of Chennai. Perfect, we're going to go ahead and get that back up again. We do have a promotion though, so we're going to take that real quick. And then we will do the recruit partisans. That's fine there. This is a fully promoted spy now with uh, Cat Burglar, Con Artists for Siphon Funds, and Gorilla Leader. Let's go ahead and next turn he will be getting more of that stuff there. All right, and Tiny Dancer, we could build up a couple things here. And I'm thinking we had the option to go for a university, get some housing. Uh, we could do an arena. Um, we can also do something like the Bolshoi Theater, uh, Venetian Arsenal, Hermitage, or Ruhr Valley. Uh, Bolshoi Theater would probably be our best bet, uh, but other things would be Hermitage. That would be pretty good as well. Hermitage takes 48. Uh, the Bolshoi Theater takes 41. So the Bolshoi Theater takes up one of our trading domes. I think that's okay to take out. Uh, we can take that out, and then uh, we can also switch to being more production in this city. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to purchase a coal power plant. We currently are earning three per turn, uh, so we could use this, and we are actually almost at our min a maximum anyway. So getting this coal power plant will help out a bunch and give us six production to get this Bolshoi Theater out quicker. That brought it down to 35 turns, so that's awesome. Took a good chunk of turns off of there. Now we have the opportunity to settle our city over here. We have a uh, crossbowman and settler that came over here. This one was to be a uh, trading city that we can then use to trade to things like Australia as well as Poundmaker over here. So we're going to settle this city and then we're going to use that city to then attack the uh, Barbarian encampment over here and take that guy out. Uh, now we can use this to chop out some woods and stuff and get this city online. Uh, not a great harbor over here, uh, but what I will do is potentially build... What I'll probably do is I will probably build a campus on this spot right here. Um, there's sadly no hills that I can go onto uh, that I can then put my... Um, Acropolis on because we are required to have a hill for our Acropolis as Greece, which is unfortunate, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and start working on the granary here so we can ensure that we have enough food and housing for the city. We have two, uh, eight envoys that we can spend, um, and right now we want to get as many envoys in we can as we can in the city states. And that reason is because as per Pericles, we have a bonus uh, in our we have surrounded by glory, which is five percent of our culture per city state. We are suzerain of, we get five percent of that back, so it'll expedite our culture return. Right now we are suzerain of one, so we get that five percent. That's at the bottom there, uh, so we can go ahead and get a ton more here. So let's choose Granada. I think that's a good one to take over. We are suzerain of Muscat there. Buenos areas we can take over pretty quickly. Levento we can take over pretty quickly, as well as Akkad. Additionally, uh, Tenerevo is one that we will want to get. Um, I do have enough envoys to take Suzerainty over. They have a bonus here of your uh, your civilization gains 2% culture for each great person has ever earned, up to 30%. So that would help us out a ton. So we're going to go ahead and pop three uh, three city, uh, three city envoys into them as well and take Suzerainty of there. We got uh, some air score for that. And as well, as you can see, we actually got a 30% uh, jump in our culture per turn, which is insane. We were at 140 something, 130 something, jumped up all the way to 190, which is, as you can tell by all the AI, uh, over 70, uh, uh, 70 culture above every single AI, which is amazing. So with our gold here, we actually have an open trade route. We can actually get another trader here. Um, so we're going to get that trader in this city so that we can start getting those uh, trade routes up with uh, with uh, Australia over here. So with this trade route here, we actually have a, a to Melbourne, have a plus 22 gold uh, trade route right here, which is going to be amazing for us. That's going to net us some even more income. That way we can start getting builders. Uh, we can start getting archaeologists and all of that. Uh, one, way, one thing to note is that we will be wanting to try to look for a great scientist here. Uh, we will be wanting to go for Mary Leakey. Mary Leakey is very, very critical, um, especially if you're trying to get uh, a culture win with the artifacts because she will give you 300% 300% tourism per turn for that, uh, for yours. Let's just double check that real quick. Artifacts in all your cities generate 300% of their normal tourism, gain 350 science for every artifact in the city that it is uh, pushed on to. If you have tons of artifacts, it's gonna help out a ton. So that's great to get. So we'll be keeping our eye out on a great people for that. So we probably aren't gonna be getting this one, but we wanna look out for the next couple. They're probably gonna go pretty quickly too. So we need to keep our eye out and make sure we have enough gold in the bank for that if needed. 
or faith too. Faith is something else we need to get up because we need to get our natural stuff. So we are building up a couple uh, holy sites to make sure we can secure that. I also have the access to colossal heads. So I have built one of those. I get five faith per turn on that. Uh, building a couple of those throughout my empire is going to really help out as well. I also have a uh, relationship with uh, John Curtin that I need to get friendship back with him. So let's go ahead and do that. Make a deal for some nice open borders. Give some nice gold for that. He also has a couple of amenities. I think I have all of them though. I don't have this incense. It might be good to get that. Let's go ahead. He actually does not have horses. So if I trade him four horses, he'll give me incense for a turn, uh, for 30 turns, which will be awesome for my empire. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to see if we can get an alliance with him. So we can get a cultural alliance, which will be great for us. Uh, he'll give us seven cult, uh, culture per turn. And what that means, uh, seven gold per turn, which means that uh, our trade route with him will actually increase in uh, culture as well. All right, we are entering the modern era. This is just going to be a standard age for us. We did not get enough... Uh, uh air score to be able to go to a golden age which is unfortunate but we have tons of time to get to the next era there uh pretty much everyone else is in a dark age except for uh john Curtin and montezuma uh both those guys have tons of science uh, we need to be careful of their science victories but uh some of them have research rocketry let's see where are they at john Curtin has research rocketry so we need to watch out for that but culture wise i think we're going to do pretty good we are going to expedite this quite a bit very quickly uh so, but we need to get on that pretty quickly i don't want to lag behind uh, in this city here, we're going to go ahead and purchase this tile because I think this is where we're going to be putting our campus. So I'm going to chop here and then putting a campus right there for us. It's a nice plus three. For, ded for dedication, we have seven traders. I think doing reform in the coinage is a good thing for us. Uh, we'll get a good amount of air score for there. And we might do an internal trader or something. That way we can get uh, more air score to confirm us for a golden age next era. All right, now we have the builders popping out in Seth here. I'm actually going to improve the wine real quick because I never improved that. Uh, we have a great person we can earn too. It is a great admiral. Ratio Nelson uh, instantly builds a lighthouse and shipyard. Oh, that's actually pretty awesome. Um, I do have some harbors probably coming online somewhere or that I need to have come online soon. And here we have a lighthouse. Uh, nowhere else that I'm having a harbor yet. Oh, right here in uh, Pergamon. I have a harbor being built in seven turns. So if I actually put that guy straight over there, that's going to be quite, quite good. So let's go ahead and transfer him over there. All right, we just unlock conservation. That means now our builders are going to be able to put our uh, put stuff straight towards uh, getting those uh, national parks up, which will be fantastic. And with that, I'm actually going to probably pop in the serfdom card, take out, taking out veneracy. Uh, that way we can get those extra build charges to get a little bit more woods in our cities. Um, Charismatic leader, we are earning two... Uh, we are earning two influence points per turn. Um, I think I actually might put in Merchant Confederate. We can get a little bit more gold. And we are earning plenty at a time. We are earning 150 influence points, seven per turn. If we took that out, uh, we're only losing two. So I think we'll be good there uh, with those three earning every single time. I think that's pretty good. We actually have three envoys available right now too. So we're going to pop in this. We'll get a lot more gold per turn with this. So that's going to jump us up all the way to 400 gold per turn, which is going to be amazing. Choosing our next uh, Civic, we're going to pop in and get a uh, really quick Civil Engineering. That way we can get the card uh, Public Works where we get third percent plus 30 percent production towards builders and newly built and tr newly built builders gain two extra actions of building so that's gonna be really awesome uh then we'll probably pick up urbanization real quick and then we will go straight for i think cultural heritage is good after that we'll pick up that and then we'll work our way down to democracy and then picking up uh professional sports after that i think i think that's a good way to go uh let's go ahead and do that again so we wanted civil engineering then we wanted urbanization then we wanted cultural heritage then democracy and professional sports. All right, in our city of Eritrea, uh, we just finished up an entertainment complex so we can actually get ahead a nice Acropolis, which will actually be a plus three if we put it right here. Uh, we could buy, nope, that's the only tile we can go on, sadly. So we're gonna actually put it on that tile. Uh, we can get a national park here if we go ahead and uh, get these tiles and get some builders and put some stuff on it. So we're gonna go ahead and put our Acropolis there. The Acropolis is gonna help with, with culture and things like that. Uh, we will wanna purchase this tile so that Auckland doesn't grow to it accidentally. Uh, and so we can secure these tiles here for a national park. With those three envoys, we're going to see whatever other suzerainty we can take. We could get Auckland here. Um, everywhere else, I think we can't take suzerainty of them. So we're going to go ahead and do Auckland here. Uh, pop in three of them and take that suzerainty there. So we have a promotion. We're going to try to get Pangala right now. He has a grants promotion. We want to get Curator. That's going to give us extra tourism from great works of art, writing, and uh, music in the city. And currently he is in the city of Tiny Dancer. So we're going to want to make sure that we get a lot of great works into that city. So Tiny Dancer currently has no archaeologists or anything like that. So, but it does have a great work of writing. We can actually move from Athens down to there. We'll actually get 12 tourism per turn. You can see there's an increase based on Athens. Athens has four culture, eight tourism, where we still are getting the same amount of culture, but we're getting, uh, we are getting 12 tourism here now in Tiny dancer all right we just discovered flight uh unlocking uh air drones hangers as well as uh receive tourism on all things that provide us culture which is going to help us out a bunch that means a lot of our theater squares and stuff like that are also going to be generating uh, tourism per turn uh we're getting more builders out of sets so we're going to be sending those to get our uh, national parks online game woods and things like that 
So we might send them over here to the city of Permagon. We're going to continue siphoning funds from Shanai here, getting 1,800 gold per turn, which is going to be amazing. Right now we have 3,000 gold in the bank. So we're actually going to be probably purchasing a archaeologist in here so we can go around and get those uh, archaeologists like we wanted. Now that we've got flight, uh, radio is the next step that we can potentially get some seaside resorts. I don't think we have potential for too many seaside resorts in our uh, civilization, but we have a couple areas where it might be a uh, possibility. All right, and we finally have enough faith to purchase our first naturalist, I think, here. So we actually have 600 uh, faith, which is perfect. So we're going to actually pop our naturalist up here, and we should be able to get a national park here uh, once we buy the tile right here. So if we pop in here and buy this for 150, we could probably see, yep, national park right there. So next turn, we're going to get that national park up. Currently in our city of Athens, we are at a housing limit. We have 13 turns that so we get a population that we can actually get another district in the city. So what we're currently going to do is we are going to currently work on theater fair square festivals. That way we can get um, some great rider points as well as great artists and great musicians. All right, finally in the city of Pergamon, we have finished up that harbor so we can actually activate Horatio Nelson. That's going to net us a lighthouse and a shipyard in this. Uh, so, so far we have nine production in this city. Let's see what this does here. Uh, it'll give us a shipyard and everything. That gives us up to 12, which is great. Um, gives us some extra bonus resources there as well as lighthouse and um, that shipyard, which is going to be amazing for getting up another trade route. And I think that trade route, we're going to pop back into uh, Tyrene's. Uh, that way we can probably trade from there with a uh, pound maker, get some open borders and stuff like that, as well as getting that um, bonus tourism from having a trade route with another civilization. All right, we've got our first archaeologist here in Tiny Dancer. So what we're going to do, we actually have a artifact right on our campus here. We're going to extract that. And then what you want to do is when you have artifacts and stuff like that, you want to have one from every civilization. I don't know why it's not popping up here in Tiny Dancer. Oh, it's because I got to choose an artifact, which is from Pericles, which is from me. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have one from each um, see how it's created by Pericles. I want to have one of those from each society that I have. Um, I don't want it to be from only a single one. I want that to be from each uh, civilization because that will uh, theme this archaeology museum, which gives us bonus tourism per turn. All right, and I'm going to send another spy that we just got to uh, the Aztecs over here so that we can get some siphon funds off of them too. So make sure we get some plenty of gold coming in for us as we want to be purchasing builders as well as uh, things like archaeologists to get our uh, culture up per turn and tourism up per turn. Get this 90 up pretty high. All right, we got just got our trader here in Tyrenes. Uh, now we have the ability to trade here with Poundmaker, which will give us another open borders uh, trade route with another civilization, which nets us more tourism per turn. Now this archaeologist, like I said, we want him to send him to a different continent that has uh, different things going on here. So what I want to do is send him down here because it will likely be a Dido, uh, Dido artifact from there. Uh, we got a Caravel in this city, so we're going to have him automate explore, see if he can pick up some barbarian kills as well as maybe um, help make sure that we can explore everything on the map. We just picked up our first great musician as a great person. Uh, we are not too far from two other great people, which is going to be... Uh, uh, El Greco, as well as Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to be very close to getting that, so we should get that one next turn, as well as El Greco uh, in the next turns after that. All right, now we have our first naturalist. We're going to pop her, uh, them right over here and designate our first national park. Perfect. Beautiful air score there. Beautiful national park. It is the Eritrea National Park right here in the rope uh, road. Rodope Mountains, I think that's how you pronounce that. That's kind of weird looking, but yep. And uh, we have our Theater Square Corner Acropolis actually coming up in here. Uh, and then hopefully we can get another uh, one or two national parks. We might be able to squeeze one up right here. Uh, will I have enough tiles to get there? No, I won't. So I'll have to squeeze it in somewhere. Maybe I can do it right here. So we'll get some more national parks up and hopefully get some more air score as well as tourism. All right, now we got Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to pop him in and we want him to uh, pop in the city of Athens. And then again, we want to just double check, make sure we have the most amount of things we do in the city of Tiny Dancer as we have Pangala in that city. Uh, we still have to wait for our archaeology museum to be filled up. That will give us our most tourism per turn. So now that we have another governor title, we're actually probably going to be picking Amani here because we want some new, more suzerainty so we can get extra culture per turn. And I think we're going to choose one that we're pretty close to getting. Um, so I think Muscat, we need to get a couple extra envoys so we can get that suzerainty back. Uh, Philip II and Nas Gramu would be good to get. So, But we're going to pop it into Muscat here just to ensure that we can get that uh, suzerainty back there. So pop her straight into... Do, 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 where is it? Muscat, right there. Perfect. And once she is founded in that city, she'll give us two envoys, which we, will give us that suzerainty. All right, we have our, our archaeologist moved down here to Dido's lands. So let's go ahead and extract this artifact and hope that we get one from Dido. And there we did. It is from Dido. Perfect. And it was um, our hero, um, our archaeologist hero of Dido. Uh, it was from Hippolyta. Cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that. Now we get 10 uh, tourism for turn uh, based on the torch of Mali, uh, Maui as well as the griddle of Hippolyta. In terms of trading out our cards, I think we're currently good at what we have. Uh, keeping up craftsmen, getting our industrial zones, producing things quicker is a great thing for us. The Grand Opera is helping us get a lot more culture. Uh, and well, let's see here. With the new update, which this city, uh, this uh, game has been updated to the new update here in December, I actually have 50% if population is 15 or higher, and if I have to have a plus four adjacency bonus on my theater squares to have any benefit from Grand Opera. So let's make sure that's actually applying here for us. Uh, this spy is going to operate at two levels quicker. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at our Empire lens. This is a great way to see what your uh, adjacencies are. So I would get the plus 50% here, and I would get it here. And I have a plus three here, so I would need to up this up to get a plus four or greater for that to apply to that place. 
Um, nowhere else has a plus four per se. So, but it would apply in three or two of my um, Acropolises so far. Um, and then a 50, cities of 15 population or more, I don't have any. So I don't think this is actually too much of a benefit for me. So I think actually taking out that Grand Opera's card and putting in something such as Trade Confederation might help. Um, or let's see, let's see, let's see. I think actually Raj is going to be our best bet here. Uh, we have plus two science, uh, culture, and faith, and gold from each city state we are suzerain of. And currently, we are suzerain of one, two, three, four, five city states, soon to be six, uh, which will give us even, uh, so that would give us 12 science, culture, and gold, and faith per turn. So I think that's a pretty good deal. So let's go ahead and pop that in. All right, in the city of Sparta, we are having a housing situation. So we actually might pop in a neighborhood here. We can get a nice plus five right here. So I think that's a good bet for us. So we'll pop it down on that marsh tile. So with these builders over here, I'm going to start taking out these farms, mainly because as we are generating faith, we're going to get a natural list up and we can start getting our national parks over here. All right, we again require 2,000 gold from the city of Chennai, getting that gold income up very quickly, earning already 200, uh, 2,700 gold. Uh, we're earning almost 700 per turn, which is quite amazing. All right, in the city of Nero, we have reached a population of 10, so we can build another district. Another Acropolis would be a great thing to do. We can get a plus two down here. Uh, this one would be a straight neutral one. So it might be good to get the plus two here. Uh, that way we can get at least some adjacency bonus there. We are losing out on quite a bit of production there. That's five production that we could be using in set. Um, I think it is worth it though. That way we can make sure we get enough great writers, uh, great writers uh, and archaeologists and things like that up. So let's go ahead and take that mine out. Unfortunately, it's going to have to come out, but I think it's worth it to get that culture and tourism per turn. All right, with our 1700 gold, we can actually go ahead and purchase another archaeologist or two. So let's go ahead and purchase an archaeologist in the city of Olympia. Uh, this way we can go ahead and take out these antiquity sites here uh, and then uh, move on to other civilizations to take some of their antiquity sites as well, like over here in uh, the Indian Empire. All right, in the city of Seth, we have built a ton of builders in here that are out around our empire making woods and things like that helping out our civilization getting up those national parks so now i need to figure out what i want to do next with this city um there's things that i can do i can actually build an archaeologist so i actually think i'm going to go do it go ahead and do that quickly in the city of seth as it won't take too much time and we're going to send that builder out to do some more woods building for those national parks so we have a trader in um tiny dancer that we can now put into another city um so far let's see we had trade with with ourselves we have one with uh Australia. We have one with Poundmaker, with Dido, uh, with Catherine here, with Gandhi, and let's see who else we can get. We can get one with Spain. Uh, let's see. This one will generate me the most gold. It takes 36 turns, but get 23 gold per turn. I think that's a good deal. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right. We have our archaeologist here that's been collecting uh, the hero relics. And over here in the city of Chennai of India, we're going to go ahead and pick up this last artifact. Pick it up. It is the iconic left by the hero of Gandhi and Opalina, uh, the crown of Himiko. Very, very cool. So let's look at our great works now. We actually have a 30 themed tourism um, little uh, archaeology museum here in the city of Tiny Dancer, which is very, very awesome. That's going to net us a lot, a lot of tourism per turn. All right. We just unlocked radio, so we now have access to Seaside resorts as well as aluminum and the broadcast center which we can get great works of music slots uh so we're getting the getting those around our empire so that way we can put in those great works of writing uh music in our cities all right we have three envoys now that we can pop into a couple cities uh we need to take back the suzerainty of antananarivo that's going to give us some extra the extra culture boost that we need uh, it actually will probably net us up to pretty pretty high uh, culture bonus. I can't remember what it was last time, uh, but we want to look at another city state. Uh, we have two more that we can pop into other places that we might be able to get some. Um, let's see, we have six here. Mm, that's going to be the closest one. So we want to pick Nazgugamu here. I'm butchering that name, but hopefully we can pop in two more and then maybe take that from Philip the second. All right, we just unlock cultural heritage. That gives us the Sydney Opera House that we can build as well as access to shipyards. So instead of our archaeologists digging up just uh, antiquity sites, we can actually do shipyards with our dot along the coast. And hopefully there's quite a few in our uh, in, uh, around the map. We also have access to uh, the, the Heritage Tourism, which gives us actually 100% tourism for great works of art and artifacts that we can pop in. So what we're going to be probably taking is taking out something such as naval infrastructure that will lose us some uh, gold per turn, but I think it's going to be better in the long run to, for getting that tourism up as quick as possible. Now in the city of Nero, we actually have the opportunity to build a Sydney Opera House. I think that's actually going to be a great play for us. Uh, we, it only takes us 55 turns because we have a fair amount of production in this city, and I can actually purchase a factory and stuff to make this go even quicker. So 55 turns is not too bad, especially for something of high, this, this high of production. So let's go ahead and do the Sydney Opera House here. Um, let's do it on this tile here. That sounds great to me. And now what we can actually do is we can go ahead and purchase a factory. Uh, and then we can't purchase anything else, so we're going to go ahead and hold on that. But we can purchase a coal power plant to expedite that even quicker. Hey guys, a little episode break here. Be sure to drink some water while you're watching these episodes and browsing YouTube and things like that. Uh, hydration is key. <laughs> 
Um, also, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying the series. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more content. And additionally, uh, if you guys want to uh, view a playlist for uh, how to play Civ 6 Deity, go ahead and click the card above. I'm going to be doing basic walkthroughs of how to improve your gameplay to be able to play on higher difficulties. Well, let's get back to the episode. All right, now we have three more envoys. We're going to go ahead and pop those straight into Nazgrigamu. I am butchering that name again. Sorry about that, guys. Get six in there, and now I have one more envoy. Let's go ahead and put it in Bandar Brunei. That way we can get up to three envoys which gives us plus four for every bank, shipyard, and consulate building. Jumps us up a pretty good chunk of gold and gives us the uh, suzerainty here. So now we have our suzerain of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, cities at uh, city states right now, which gives us an extra 40% culture return and an extra 16% from the great people uh, from being a uh, suzerain of Ontana Narevo. So we're earning tons of culture return. All right, Boy Shore Theater, we got that built. Awesome, we got that built in Tiny Dancer. That way we can put some great works in there and use Pangala to get some extra tourism return. So now in the city of Tiny Dancer, we have a toss up. Uh, we have another district that we can build in the city. We could get a harbor and get a plus four harbor here. Another thing we can note is that a um, a nice uh, neighborhood can be built. Uh, that might be the play. And we also have the opportunity to build the Hermitage in 25 turns. Um, I don't think anyone else is building it. That might be something we can do. It might be good to get one of these other things online really quickly though. So getting up a harbor, commercial hub, or something of that nature might be better than just getting up another district or another wonder. So let's go ahead and put down that harbor. That gives us some extra gold, a nice plus four, which will definitely be worth it. Um, and then I think we'll go for a neighborhood after that because we are at a housing uh, limit. So what we might actually do is queue up a neighborhood first. We actually have a nice plus six right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Get that nice plus six going. Uh, get that harp neighborhood first so we are out of our housing uh, cap there and then maybe we can build a hermitage here uh, We won't start the production on that until after the harbor there the harbor We can go ahead and purchase things like a shipyard that will expedite the construction of that hermitage even greater So let's go ahead and do that. That's a good plan for tiny dancer here All right, we just unlocked, unlocked mass media which gives us access to build the Broadway Which would be 20% uh, culture in an individual city as well as a free atomic era boost uh, It must be built on a flat land adjacent to a theater square as well Also get access to Chris O'Reilly tour which gives us tourism outposts posts from relics and holy cities and is not diminished by other civil uh, civilizations who have researched the enlightenment civic we also get 100 tourism from seaside resorts across our empire and must be built on hills one thing important to remember as you're going for a tourism uh, win is to get open borders as you can see here with dido i do not have open borders that is designated by the solid line here and we can also see based upon our relationship tree if we go ahead and click on her uh, usually in a under the our relationships we would have a uh, open borders symbol here uh, we can really quickly see here if we go ahead and trade with her, uh, make a deal, go ahead and get open borders. She will actually probably pay us some gold too. So she'll give us some 20 gold. And then what if we, if we look back at the screen now in agreements, we have open borders and we gave them open borders. And now that's designated here in this dotted line. But if you go ahead and look at your world ranking and go to the culture tab, you can then see under Dido, I'm actually, uh, you can see under here, I have overall tourism posted for open borders and I get plus 25% open uh, tourism uh, for open borders from her uh, based upon that. So I'm actually earning quite a bit more. As you can see, Lady Six Guy, I do have open borders, uh, but I do not have a trade route with her. So that's something I'm gonna wanna get from her. Now that we've got cultural heritage undone, uh, I think we're gonna go for capitalism. So we have access to the shopping mall. Uh, this grants us plus four tourism, but it can be built in neighborhoods, gives us some gold and amenities. Uh, and then I think after that, we're gonna go for straightforward democracy. I think that's a good play. All right, we actually have a builder with two chances left, but we actually have the opportunity to make a seaside resort. This is gonna be our first one in our city. Uh, you can do this based on appeal locations. Uh, as you can see, this tile, is actually a very very high appeal it has a breathtaking appeal of four so that will net us uh four gold per turn based on it having a seaside resort as well as giving us tourism that nets us some air score as well our seaside our first seaside resort opens in nero to the delight of all our people except for one small child who snack has been carried away by a seagull that's pretty funny i don't think i've ever read that before all right, we also have enough face saved up so that we can actually start purchasing more naturals here. I think we're going to do in here in Pergamon. Pergamon. Uh, we'll purchase our next naturals here, and that way we can get some of these national parks online down here. All right, got that national park up. Perfect. Got some extra three arrow score, which gets us very, very close to getting a new golden age for the next era. Uh, we have plenty of time for that, too. On six to, to 16 to 36 turns, meaning we'll have plenty of time to get up more naturalists and get more national parks up. So we don't have to worry too much about... Uh, having enough uh having enough uh faith return or enough era score to get a golden age all right using our archaeologists here we're picking up a couple extra artifacts here uh we're picking up one right here from here which we are going to choose probably from barbarians we have a couple from Gandhi. barbarians would be a good one to pick up here uh we got a renaissance era so we'll work uh, great works here we also have another one right down here excavate here uh we'll do from philip ii we don't have philip ii that's a classical era so looking at our guys here uh we do have a archaeology museum here one has barbarians in the ancient era one has medieval with gandhi and classical by philip so we want to try it out with something right here um so medieval classical ancient so we want to trade with something there where there's renaissance medieval renaissance 
So we can put that, once these are filled up, we can put that with there. We're gonna have to find another archaeology museum in here to make sure that we can get that uh, these ones themed properly. I have now, I now have enough faith to purchase another naturalist, so we're gonna go ahead and put another one right over here. Uh, actually, no, I need 800 faith returns, so we're gonna wait for next turn and get that here. Uh, click this button real quick. Uh, Dido has some ref demands, two gold per turn, she announced this last turn. So we're not going to meet those demands because we don't want to pay you anything. Uh, John Curtin, they want some diamonds, which we have two of. They want to trade us iron. I really don't need iron. Uh, you'll trade me 18 gold per turn for horses and uh, diamonds, which I don't need the horses, so go right ahead, actually. That's actually great for us. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get our naturalist here after we get ballistics. Uh, we want to go here and purchase that naturalist. And then uh, next turn, we'll go ahead and pop another national park right in here. So we have won the World's Fair. We got one dip diplomatic victory point as well as 100 great people person uh, great person points. Um, and yeah, we got the gold tier rewards. That's awesome. We won it by a pretty long shot. I actually forgot about that. So that's pretty cool that we got that. All right, with our naturals here, we're going to pop it over right to our left here and get another national park. Perfect. That plus three era score there. We can now delete, delete all these pins. Oh, that's satisfying there. Cool. Let's look at our tourism map and see how much tourism we're gaining per turn. So these ones will take a little bit while, but we have 20 tourism there, uh, 16 here. Let's see. What else are we getting? We're getting um, 16 tourism per turn. This one already has 863 tourists accumulated over its life. Uh, we have over a thousand here in Tiny Dancer, the Acropolis over here. And the city center over here, we all already have 19, 000, uh, 1900 here uh, in the city center there. Let's see, anywhere else that's getting a lot of tourism. No, but we have starts things that are gaining small little bits of tourism per turn, which is going to be great for us, and we're going to keep expanding this. Uh, we need more faith generation, that way we can get up more naturalists. Uh, we need more great works, that way we can get more tourism for here. Uh, but we've already increased from two, uh, from uh, very, very low to 268. I can't, I can't remember, it was like 90 or 70 something at the beginning of the episode. So we'll have to take a look at that. It's really awesome. And we actually got three uh, great people this turn. So we have a great admiral. Um, that gives us a battleship and coal per turn. We got a great writer, Scott Fitzgerald, and then a great artist as well. So let's recruit all these really quick, and then we can pop them into our cities. So, a great writer, we can pop one here in the Bullshore Theater. Uh, we got some great writings, which we can pop into some of the nice, um, broadcast centers that we've gotten. Alright, in the city of Sparta, we have a couple things we could build. A shopping mall would be nice. Um, we actually have enough gold to probably purchase both a shopping mall and a university. Yeah, we have just enough gold. Uh, we can get one or the other. So let's actually go ahead and get a shopping mall. We can get that tourism instantly. Uh, and then we can actually start getting work on either Broadway or Crystal Railing Tour. I think Broadway is going to be the best for us, though. Uh, so we can pop that there against that Acropolis there and be good to go. We have this archaeologist here who's going to just pick up some of these uh, antiquity sites we have around here. I'm actually going to pick up this one over here. That way I can get a national park over here. All right, we just got suffrage, which means we have actually unlocked democracy, which is a great... Uh, great uh tier of government to get unlocked because we have a uh our trade routes with an ally or a suzerain provide plus four four plus four food and plus four production for both cities alliance points with all alliances increased by additional 0.25 per turn as well as there's a hidden bonus for tourism against uh against some of our um uh, uh, the people we are against the other ai so that's helpful for us as well so now we got some extra policy slots. We need to see, I don't think that Grand Opera helps us still. I don't think we are at 15 population in any of our cities. Nope. Um, let's look, make sure our adjacency bonuses, make sure we have a plus eight here, plus three there, plus five there. So that there's two that would get bonuses from that. Uh, let's see, there's a plus four, so three. So three would get bonuses, four would get bonuses. So we have some things that would actually get plus 50%. So let's go ahead and pop in that card and see if that helps us out a bunch. Uh, that would be a good one to pop in here. And now we need something that's going to either help us with tourism or some other thing. Let's see, we could pop in, actually, a Merchant Confederate would give us extra gold. Gold is always helpful for getting archaeologists, um, getting uh, things like extra districts, um, extra uh, buildings in our districts and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Gold is always useful in every single one of your games. All right, next we're going to actually be going for Cold War. That we can, way we can get rock bands up and send those to other AI to even increase our cult, uh, tourism per turn even quicker. All right, now we have our all our archaeology museums filled out. So now we want to go ahead and theme them as best we can. So let's go ahead and start off with the one in Olympia. We got some ancient artifacts by the Barbarians, classical by Philip II, and medieval by Gandhi. So let's go ahead and see if we can find some ancient artifacts and put them all in Olympia real quick. Uh, there's all Renaissance, actually. Um, if we took this... Actually, let's find one Renaissance. And we can actually theme the one here in Seth immediately by popping that one in. Now we'll have one Renaissance Barbarian, Renaissance Dido, and Renaissance uh, Sam Samarkind. Uh, and that is now themed, and we have 27 tourism coming from that. And actually from that, we also themed the one in Eritrea, surprisingly. Uh, they both had Renaissance ones from Philip II and Barbarians as well. So they all have, this one just has switched from Dido to Philip II, but that was convenient. We just swept that one, and I think both of them at the same time. Uh, now let's see if the one in Melitos and Olympia can switch out to make a, another themed one. I doubt it, but we will see. So we have three, two medievals and one industrial. 
Uh, do we have a medieval? We do actually. So we can get this one themed as well in Militos. So we can actually pop this in there, theme that one. Now it has 27 uh, tourism per turn. As you can see with the, from 18 to 27 tourism, that's almost 10 more tourism per turn. It's nine technically, but it gives you a lot more tourism as you theme your museums. Uh, you can technically do the same thing with art museums. Uh, this is a little bit different for theming of these, uh, same type of different artists. So for artwork, all these have to be landscapes, uh, but they have to be from different artists. So what I'm gonna have to do is find some landscapes such as this El Greco one and pop it into this one instead. Uh, these ones have not been moved, so I cannot do that. These are all sculptures. Um, let's see here. I do have a couple more art museums, but I cannot move these guys yet, but I can put another landscape and I'd have to get one more to theme this art museum. Uh, this one, I'd have to get two, uh, two other religions because I have two from El Greco. So I'd have to move one of these out and get two more. So as we get more great people, uh, as we're earning more of them, we will get more and more uh, and hopefully get those uh, quickly and fill those out and maybe theme those as well. So currently I actually have the ability to buy a settler. Um, what I might actually do is that actually, if I look at my appeal, I have a city over here that I can build and get one national park here. Well, let's see, how can we get two national parks out of this? If I'd hit a national park here, I don't think I'd get, be able to get one here because these are all desert tiles, is that correct? They are, so I won't be able to do anything there. But if I do one here, I might be able to sneak one in up here maybe? No, I don't think so. I could potentially get, let's see, I could get one here, but then the rest of this is desert. The desert's just not gonna have enough peel for that. Uh, what I could do is there's a, a one there and one there if I really wanted to. So if I wanted to put a settler right on this tile, I could, and then get two, um, two national parks right up here as well, once I get the tiles and everything. So I think I'm actually gonna purchase a, a settler in here, tie him up with this nice crossbowman, and send him right up to this corner, because I can also get a harbor there too, that can generate me some gold and stuff like that. I don't know if I'll need that, but we will see. Um, here in uh, Seth, we're gonna go ahead and get an aquarium. Uh, this builder, what are you doing, good sir? This builder, he can go ahead and there's nothing really you need to do up here. So let's go ahead and just send you down. Let's just send you to get something up somewhere else. So conveniently, I had two uh, two siphon funds pop up at the same time. So in that turn, I had only a thousand gold and now I'm up to 5,500 gold. Uh, so earning tons of bank really quickly. So that's the power of siphon funds. You can get a lot, a lot of money really quickly, especially from the AI that has some really good commercial hubs. All right, and we actually have enough faith here to purchase our last, uh, oh, not natural. Oh, I have to move our great person here. Go ahead and pop you in there and get another great work of music. And then we can actually purchase my last natural in here. And this naturalist can get this uh, this national park up here. Uh, I do note that there's another national parking gate here. Uh, let's see where else. I can get another national park here. And let's see, is there another spot in our empire that we can get a national park? Currently, no, but as we send this guy up here to the north, we might be able to get another one or two national parks. National parks are really great for tourism. If we go ahead and look at our tourism lens, uh, we're getting one from here, 140. We're getting 208 tourism. Um, let's see, we have these ones over here, two tourists from there, and that's it for our national parks for right now, but that's earning us a lot of tourism per turn uh, as we get up to 364 tourism per turn from our cities, uh, from everything else. So. They're very great to have, as well as the great works. In our city of Verisalos, we're actually going to probably get a water park because that can give us an adjacency bonus for our uh, our nice uh, uh, Acropolis. I don't know why I'm going to think of it. So that'll give us an actual adjacency bonus of plus two, which will make as soon as it is as soon as it is built here in ten turns. We look at our empire lens. So right now, we don't have any bonuses from this. We'll get a plus uh, two bonus from having that water park right next to it. All right, we're now entering the atomic era. We are going to be going into another golden age. Montezuma's happy with that. Perfect. Um, Tiny Dancer expands further, becoming the largest population city. We've got professional sports, which we can now do ski resorts, which gives us some appeal. And as well as tourism, uh, we can build the aquatic centers in our uh, water parks. Uh, we can build this nice um, uh, wonder for plus two amenities in each city. Uh, or we can do stadiums in our entertainment districts. Uh, I also can do 100% uh, uh, square district bonus, as well as stadiums generate plus one amenities. That's pretty good. Uh, that actually replaces one of our slots here, so we can actually pop that in with sports media instead. So now we can get that as well. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we would want to trade in here? Um, let's see, I'm not seeing anything here so far. I don't think we need to do anything with any of our wildcard policy slots. Uh, let's see, nothing here. Military research for plus two science is good there. I think that's good so far. I don't think we need to do anything else. So let's choose our, um, let's choose our dedication. And we are obviously gonna pick Wish We Were Here. Well, cities with governors receive plus 50% tourism from World Wonders, plus 100% from to all national parks. So that doesn't need to have a governor to have it for national parks. So all our national parks are gonna be turning out a bunch of era, uh, tourism. So let's go ahead and before I click on that, let's look at what we're generating per one here. So plus 15. Uh, plus 19 and plus 16. So let's go ahead and choose that dedication and see what that changes to. So it should play 
go pretty far up now. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to repeat that route. I know that that's going there. Let's go ahead and repick our tourism lens. And now you can see 30 tourism, 38 tourism, 32 tourism. So earning a lot more there. That's really awesome. That's going to expedite our win very quickly. This is getting 36. Very, very good. So if we look how many turns, so we have 295 tourists, tourists right now are technically 49, but 295 right here. Uh, we're earning tons from our other places here. Uh, we definitely need to make sure we have open borders with everyone. And the best way to do that is actually just to click on one of these people up here and then just go through the, from top to bottom, uh, look at the agreements tab. If you see these border things, you have open borders with them. So we'll just double check everyone here. We still have open borders with Dido, even though they've denounced me, which is perfect. Uh, open borders here, 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 and here. Perfect. And we still have alliances up and everything like that, so that's great. You want to have good relations with the AI to get that going. So we have four envoys to spend. What we're going to go ahead and do is take back Granada as suzerain. Uh, these suzerains, like I said before, plenty of times, uh, we get plus 5% of our culture multiplied back for every suzerainty we have. Uh, let's see, who else can we take suzerainty of? Is there anyone? Uh, Lisbon, we have three more, so we can take suzerainty of Lisbon as well. Perfect. So now we have suzerainty of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine city states. So nine times five, we should have a uh, plus 45% uh, increase in our culture per turn. And if we look here at the very bottom of that list, uh, we have the 45%. And then since we are suzerain of uh, Antana and Arevo, we get uh, plus 3% culture for every great per person we have recruited, which we have earned. That means three. That means we've earned how many? Uh, enough. We've earned enough. So we're getting tons, tons of culture per that. We all have almost 900 culture per turn. No one else has even above 150. So we are rocking in culture per turn. It's pretty awesome that all our cities are generating that much, especially since we're at 480 tourism per turn and we haven't even gotten uh, rock bands or anything out. So we're getting tons. All right. We finally got our settler up here where we can get some national parks up going. Uh, so we're going to head and settle this guy here. Uh, and then we want this guy to go ahead and get these things going so we can get some national parks up. Let's make sure we're not using any tiles that we would be using for a national park. Um, so ideally, let's go ahead and pin out where we went on our national park. So I'm thinking one here and one here. So I think we can still get the silver mine up. That'd be good. And this crossbowman's just kind of going to hang out here, defend against barbarians and stuff like that. So we've got a new trader in the city of Seth. We technically do not have a trade route to the Lady Six guy. So let's go ahead and give her one. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go to gold and see if she has one that's pretty high up. So they do. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll get 21 gold per turn. We'll have a, a, a trade with a trade route with uh, Lay Six Guy, which will give tourism for us. Uh, we'll get a 25% bonus to Lay Six Guy for tourists coming to us, which will be really great. All right. In the city of Eritrea, we have just finished Renaissance Walls, which is great for us. I think now what we could do is do St. Basile's Cathedral. Uh, this will be a long time coming though. So let's go ahead and just do a monument for the short game. Uh, in this city, we could definitely get a good harbor up. Uh, we could get an Acropolis too. Um, I'm thinking the harbor is probably, uh, Acropolis only takes 56 turns. So that that would actually be pretty good, but we'd probably lose out on a national park or maybe we want it. Let's go ahead and look here. So we could get a national park here instead, as well as here. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that's an okay choice to get another Acropolis in here. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, that's still good. Cause we could get one here and one here which will be perfect for us. We need to get in a couple more builders probably over here though, so we can buy some of those. All right, we just discovered steel, which means that we cannot get uh, Renaissance walls or build Renaissance walls in any of our cities anymore. But luckily for most of our empire, we've already built or are currently building things like most of our walls. We haven't gotten Renaissance walls on a lot of them, but at the same token, we probably don't need them in every single one now. Uh, we're getting medieval walls in two of them. We'll still get tourism from those lower level walls, but everything else will already have full level walls, which will be great for uh, if the AI decides to go to war with me now, which I don't think they will. And I doubt it because I'm probably going to win a culture victory here pretty soon anyway. All right, we got environmentalism, which is really great because we actually get a plus 25% boost to tourism across our entire empire, which is going to be huge for that uh, tourism income. Uh, that means national parks, great works, all of it gets additional uh, tourism per, per turn. So we're now up to 600 tourism per turn from our cities, which is amazing. And we also had a huge jump in our gold per turn this time. Uh, we stole 2000 gold last uh, from uh, last turn from the city of Shanai, which is awesome. So we can actually go ahead and from this guy steal uh, 2000 gold again. Those guys are just money pots just waiting uh, to get uh, to steal their money, which is awesome. I love it. All right, next we're going to go for the Space Race Civic. That's going to give us satellite broadcast, which gives us 200% tourism for our great works of music, which we have quite a few online already. So we want to get those to give us extra tourism. And we just earned a great person, uh, Angelica Kaufman. Uh, so that's a modern era uh, great artist. So she'll give us some portraits, which we don't technically need too many portraits, but that it'll help us out regardless. So where do we need to pop her? So we have an art museum up here in uh, Fair Solos. Salos. Uh, we're going to go ahead and transfer her up there then. All right, and following the immediately next turn, we've finished our... Uh, uh, siphon funds from uh, the Aztecs, we've resold another 2,000 gold, so we're up to almost 8,000 gold. Uh, let's see if we actually have any great people that we want to take. 
That does not look like it. Let's make sure that Mary Leaky wasn't stolen. I haven't seen it, but I want to just double check because there was some that got... Yep. So Gandhi actually stole it the same turn that uh, it was... A bunch of these guys were all taken at the same time, so we missed out upon that. That really sucks. Gandhi kind of stole it from under us, but that's okay. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not too heartbroken. It would have been awesome. It would have been a lot quicker win with that, but I think we're pretty good. Uh, we do get the uh, Beatrix Potter. Uh, we do get that Great Rider, which is great for us. Uh, there's no one else we want to buy, though, is there? We have tons of gold. But none of these guys, it doesn't really matter us for us too much. Uh, yeah, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be cool to get another great person for that kind of stuff. But um, we are now, if you look at the bottom here of our culture uh, per turn, we actually are at the 30% mark, which is the maximum we can get from benefits from Ont the suzerainty of Ontana Narevo. So however many great people we get, unless it's a great writer, a great artist, uh, some archaeologists, or a great musician, it really doesn't matter anymore for that. Uh, just getting stuff to give us tourism is the best thing. The only thing it provides us with is good arrow score and things like that. All right. And we actually just finished our first stadium in the city of Tiny Dancer. Uh, in Greece, the expression spent the afternoon in Tiny Dancer means to have a wonderful time. We got three air score for that. That's perfect. And we're three turns away from getting the Hermitage. Uh, we got a couple other things like the Sydney Opera House, which we're eight turns away from. Uh, we are five turns away from Aquatic Center, uh, getting the Natural History Museum up. We almost have 14 turns for Broadway. Once we get those wonders, we're going to be excelling in the tourism per turn. We already have 605. We are already 145 turns away. I think that's going to be expedited quite quickly here as we are earning have 349 tourists here already. Quite, quite good. So uh, let's keep going and uh, hopefully we get this pretty soon. All right, we just got the electricity. Um, so we actually get the seaports. So we can do a hydroelectric dam, oil power plants, some marines, and can convert oil to power as well as the space race. And this is the one we want here. Uh, satellite broadcast, we get 200% tourism from a great works of music. So we're going to want to pop that in. Uh, we also have this we need to change out. Uh, maybe we just do living on mass so our gold is just a little bit higher. Doesn't really matter too much for us. Um, and then like satellite broadcast, I think it's time to start taking out things like triangular trade. Yes, that gold is good, but I think right now we're earning so much gold, it doesn't really matter. What we need is tourism. We want to get this win as quick as possible. That's going to be our best way to do that as well. Additionally, we're going to go for the social media uh, civic here. We can get online communities. We'll get plus 50% tourism for cities, civilizations we have trade route with. When And currently, I think we have one with every single um, other civ, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that would actually jump it up from 25% all the way up to 50%. That's really good. And we can also get collective activism, which is essentially what our uh, unique ability as Pericles is, uh, per Pericles is uh, where we get 5% culture from each city state we are suzerain of. So that would compound. So we actually get 10% overall, which is really awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get the social media uh, civic online. This turn, we also have enough faith to purchase another naturalist. So we're going to go ahead and purchase one here in Olympia. I believe we have the potential for, I thought I would have the potential here, here to build another national park. It should, th I think I should be able to do that. Uh, surprisingly, I am not, but we can go ahead and get a national park right here. Uh, and I think that'll be our last one in our empire. I think we've gotten a lot of, oh, no, we could do one more, if we, actually two more if we wanted. So we have two more, and then the ones up here, as of course, that we talked about a little while ago. So we have a, the potential for a couple more. I don't know if rock bands are going to be the way to go for us anymore. Uh, we're earning enough tourism per turn that I don't think it's really too necessary. And with the policy slots and stuff we're going to be getting, like uh, computers, we're going to grant the ability and we'll get an addition, another additional 25% tourism across our empire. I think we're going to be pretty set. So let's go ahead and keep going. Uh, but we might keep rock bands in our back pocket. One thing I might have done a little bit different here is maybe add a little bit more faith per turn, maybe get a couple other um, uh, holy sites up so that I can get that uh, faith up per turn a lot quicker. That way I can purchase those rock bands and naturals every turn so we can pump them out a lot quicker and even expedite this one even better. But right now we're sitting at 671 tourism per turn. That's that's pretty amazing. That's pretty quick. Uh, and we did that all in one episode. So, and, and not too many turns either. All right, we're going to get our naturalists here in Olympia. We're going to get this national park, get a nice era score. And look at that. We got a nice uh, little tower there. Got the foxes and furs in there. Uh, let's see how much tourism that's going to generate us per turn. So that's going to generate us a nice 57 tourism per turn. Let's go ahead and look at our other national parks. 40, 47, 37. That one's a 57. That's amazing. That's so much tourism per turn. That's a great one to have. All right, there we go. The Hermitage. Now, uh, this Hermitage is actually in the city of Tiny Dancer. And if you remember, Tiny Dancer is where we have Pingala. So we actually want to transfer as many great works into this city as we can uh, so that we can get the extra bonuses from being in that city and getting the plus 100% uh, tourism from great works or art, music, and writing in that city with the curator's bonus there so looking at our great works let's go ahead tiny dancer has the hermitage we can take great works of any type so let's go ahead and pop in as much as we can there uh, we want to make sure we're not taking stuff from there anyway uh, but let's see let's do sparta let's pop in this let's pop in things that we know aren't gonna be able to be themed anywhere else um so these guys have another nine turns to be put in there um let's see it has to be a sculpture or something of that nature uh do -do 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 -do. So let's go ahead and put in one of these landscapes here because we won't be able to theme all of these with this. So, but we can theme two out of three there, but um, that's pretty good. 
Very, very good. I'm excited about this. Uh, that 24 tourism return is going to be good. Uh, I don't think it popped at a doubles in this screen, but it will in other screens for things in Tiny Dancer. I'm pretty sure. Well, potentially, actually, because we have 12 tourism here and 16 here, so I actually think it does double. And I think the doubling happens before the bonuses for my cards and everything like that pop in. So, uh, Pengala pops in first, and then the rest of the bonuses pop in there. All right, now we got the social medium civic. Uh, so now we can get that online communities and collective activism cards in. So we're going to pop out Merchant Confederate, um, pop in that collective activism, and then we are also going to see what we can do for online communities. Online communities, let's go ahead and I think we can now pop up five-year out pop five-year plan because um, the campus adjacencies and uh, industrial zones are not going to matter as much to us. So getting tourism, getting culture is going to be the way we want to go. We want to keep the economic union in because we do still want to generate some gold. That way we can buy things as quick as possible. But this is a good collective, uh, good thing for the very end because we do have some units around. Uh, so getting that gold per turn down is pretty good as well. There's nothing really else in this uh, tree up here that really helps with tourism at the very end. I guess you could uh, get something like a strategic or something like that. That could help you out for certain things like if you have gold power plants or something like that. Um, like uh, drill manuals would help out with that. Um, or if you're doing oil or something with uh, aluminum, that would help out as well. But right now, levy on masses is, is a uh, mass is going to help me out the most so let's go ahead and confirm these policies and then we also have another governor title so let's go ahead and pop in um let's see here what do we want to do i think we're actually going to pop in reina with the tax collector to get a little bit extra gold there too so after the update to the uh collective activism and online communities we now have 80 percent product uh, 80 percent bonus to culture from the suzerainty of our city states that we have which is insane we're actually getting extra 500 culture per term uh that 500 culture is so much more than any of the AI are doing. Everyone's focusing uh, science there, and uh, they're not even close. They're not even researching these later technologies. Uh, we could have probably actually gotten a science victory had we gone for it, because we are we are at the lower end. Uh, obviously, the Polish Empire is not doing well at all, but we could have gotten a science victory, but this culture victory is going to be super, super quick and easy, hopefully. Uh, it says uh, it says how many turns? It says something like 62. I think we're going to be a lot quicker than that. All right, we just unlocked computers. We can start getting flood barriers if we need, as well as uh, we got the uh, plus 25% tourism across our empire, and we got the ability to construct a distal spy to siphon funds again. All right, we just got globalization here. Uh, get plus two gold plate for plantations. Uh, we got International Space Agency, so I could technically do that, pop that in, and get a ton of science return. I don't really need that, though. Uh, none of these cards are going to really be good for us, uh, per se. So nothing helps out with tourism. That's what we want to go for, tourism or culture. So nothing we really need to change there. Uh, but that does, and we also finished sanitation so we can get sewers and stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and go for refining. Um, let's go ahead and we also got a siphon funds off, so we have even more gold per turn now. Let's go ahead and get the siphon funds again. Uh, that gold is going to help us out tons. Uh, and then we have another civic we can choose. So now we have the ability to get a tier four government, I think. Um, and let's go ahead and do digital democracy so we can get that. And actually, I can own a rock band to boost it really quick if I really wanted to. I don't have enough. Uh, I do have enough to buy one if I really, really wanted to. But I don't know if I really need it. Uh, I definitely could get it, but I don't think I need it. Uh, I do have another governor title. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just pop someone in somewhere. Um, yeah, and Nero give you plus eight. Uh, you only have plus eight. So we have one turn for sing finishing the Sydney Opera House. Uh, just really quick, in some of the cities that are done with production of most things, like if you look here in uh, Tiny Dancer, uh, production-wise, uh, there's stuff I can build, but a lot of it's not going to help me with my endgame uh, role of tourism. None of this stuff would provide tourism. Yeah, I could get some of this stuff. Yeah, I could get another wonder. But what I really need is theater square festivals to get those great writers, great artists, great musicians, so I can pop in my, my great works, so that I can finish those out, so that I can actually um, finish the game quicker, because that generates me tourism. Uh, those other things don't. Commercial Hub gives me gold, doesn't give me tourism. Aerodrome, eh, it doesn't do really anything but build aircrafts. Uh, seaport gives me food and housing. Uh, encampment doesn't help me there. Holy site would help me get, uh, generate, uh, uh, would help me generate things for, uh, naturalists and things like that, but I only have a plus one. There's nothing really else. Uh, that's not really good adjacency and it's not going to help me that much. Um, the 130 per turn, it takes me a couple turns to generate stuff, but I really don't need it. So that's just some things you can do. So you can just pop in and pr press the Q button. And at the end of the game, just pop in these and get those, uh, great people a lot quicker. All right. There's a Sydney opera house. That's going to be a nice bonus. Um, they have, oh, I have troops on their border, so they're mad at us. So look at that, nice Sydney Opera House there. Nice uh, seaside resort there, surrounded by a water park and the Sydney Opera House. Uh, the Sydney Opera House uh, gives us some uh, culture, great musician points, and three great work music slots. Um, so that's going to help be helpful for tourism. Let's actually see how much tourism it generates me per turn with all my bonuses. And it's not popping up yet. I think next turn it'll populate because uh, most of my like Bolshoi Theater pops up with stuff too. But look at that, my Bolshoi Theater is giving me 43 tours per turn. That's insane. So now that I'm at the end of the technology tree, I really don't need too many technologies. Nothing here helps me get some uh, tourism. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to click the end of the tree. Uh, it'll pick up all these civics that I have down here. 
and get me all the way to actually let's go ahead and pick up a rocketry first though just in case we need something and then shift click the end of the tree that way we can go ahead and still pick up rocketry but get all the technologies don't have to worry about it don't want to be clicking want to uh i want to manage it so that i can have as least clicks as possible per turn uh but this turn we actually need to get a friendship back with slay six guy we'll go ahead and do that make sure we get those delicious open borders so we can get the additional tourism i don't mind paying you four gold that's fine uh, i think i can get an alliance with her too an economic let's go ahead and do that perfect uh, and then we want to claim a great person here we got another great musician perfect thank you uh, there's nothing in tiny dancer that i can put in nope okay so we're gonna go ahead and get these guys on here and get them in there um discover sources of oil that's cool get those notifications out of the way all right we just unlocked digital democracy that's going to give us an extra couple slots that we can put in more wild card slots mainly so what we want to make sure is putting in grand opera back again uh anything that we can see like 100 percent district adjacency there uh, anything that would give us benefits for uh culture um other things that would be helpful is maybe scripture scripture would help us out a little bit and then we also have one more di uh, diplomatic slot that we can put in so if we really wanted we could pop in let's see let's actually pop in uh international space station i just kind of want to see what it does so so far we don't have any bonuses here except for from the individual cities that have things like universities campuses and such so with this we actually should have a pretty big jump in our science return i just kind of want to see it jump up there so let's go ahead and do that all right, we jumped up to 266 science per turn, up 35% for all the cities we are suzerain of. That's insane. Let's go ahead and pop in uh, Scott Joplin into uh, Athens here, into our uh, nice uh, National History Museum. Now, we do have enough uh, faith to now purchase another naturalist. Uh, that way we can get out one of these two. I'm not sure which one I want to do. I still can't do one there, and I'm not sure why, but that's all right. So we can put this naturalist either place. I think this is going to be a better spot in peel-wise. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, it's apples to apples kind of. I think this one would be better. I think I'll get more tourism per turn because there's two uh, more breathtaking tiles. Uh, the higher your appeal of your tiles that your national park has, the more tourism output it has per turn. So this one has a charming, a uh, breathtaking, a breathtaking five, and a breathtaking four. Uh, whereas this these tiles have breathtaking five, breathtaking four, charming three, and charming three. So this one is going to net me more tourism per turn. So that's something you want to look for when you're building your national parks. All right, we're going to take suzerainty of Muscat back here, and then we're going to pop some into some random sims because I don't think it matters at this point. I don't think I can get any new ones. Uh, so let's just pop it into to Nazca. That way we can get some more uh, more faith per turn. Uh, not going to be beneficial too much. We also have another governor title. Um, these really don't matter now, so I'm just going to stick someone in here. Um, I've now recruited all of them, so I got some extra era score, just a plus one, nothing too crazy. Uh, but yeah, going, going very, very well. Let's see, our tourism up is at 993 tours per turn. Uh, we are 123 out of 260 tourists, so we want to get that up as quick as possible. So we want to get some cards up and uh, help out with that. We're actually doing Exodus Imperative, uh, which actually gives us a 20%. Uh, uh, there's a tourism card where tw uh, other is reduced by 20% across other empires. And we just built the Broadway, which is really awesome too. We get extra culture for this one, um, as well as uh, great work of writing slots and two great works of music slots as well. So with the space tourism, uh, let's go ahead and pop this in for scripture, and I kind of want to see what it does. Let's actually look at um, let's look at our tourism per turn before we do this. So we have 15 minus 50% for enlightenment, minus 40% for different governments. Uh, same here. Let's go ahead and see what kind of bonus this does here uh, for these things here, and see if that'll help us out a bunch for our tourism. Win. But now let's go back to our win here. Um, let's see. I don't know if it applied or not. It should have, but we'll see. It should. It's not popping up on this, but. We'll definitely see. I'm actually getting plus 25%, uh, 75% for each trade route I have with these cities, uh, which is very, very good, helping me out a ton. Um, one thing I do need is uh, with uh, with these guys here, I need one with a Polish Empire to be able to do that last one. I do have a great uh, Claude Monet. I have a couple of great works of writing, uh, great landscape, uh, great works, uh, art great works, which are going to be landscapes that we need to pop in. So as we are in the very, very end game, we now have seven envoys to pop into something. So let's go ahead and take Suzerainty of something else. Um, Let's see, what, would anything help us here? Uh, Geneva would with science. Let's see, Philip II. No, no. Geneva would. So let's go ahead and pop in all our envoys into Geneva. We can take Suzerainty there, perfect. And that'll give us some extra, extra um, science return. We are now merely 16 turns away from our uh, win victory here on turn 275. So hopefully expediting that quite quickly. Uh, getting over 1,000 tours per turn from a bunch of our stuff here. I think we have a couple of new, other naturalists coming up. I think I'm going to buy the tiles here in Corinth and go ahead and uh, get another national park over here. All right, we're going to get this naturalist over here and pop in that national park right here. Boom, got that one. Let's see how much tourism per turn that's going to get us. Should be quite a handsome bout. 
It's not gonna pop up till next turn, so we'll look at that then. All right, we're 11 turns from victory here. 651 tourists, uh, actually 188 out of 269 that we need. So we need to, exp uh, we're still expediting with a 10, uh, 100, uh, 1,090 tourists per turn, which is amazing. Keep going, let's go ahead and get the shopping mall repaired. We had some flood areas we need to create. Um, we are now dominant over the Cree, which is awesome. Um, we are still saving up a little bit extra faith. I think we have one more national park we can build right here. We'll get that online. We just finished up the one over there. Uh, let's see. We were going to look at the tourism per turn. It's not popping up with anything there, which is weird, but we'll see. I'm not sure why that's not popping up. So. All right, quick update on my cities. A lot of them are just working those theater square festivals like I talked about. Other ones are just looking, uh, doing miscellaneous things like aquariums that can give us culture. Uh, like in this city, I'm just probably just going to do something that takes a little bit of time. Research lab, six turns. That's probably fine. I actually think the game's going to end within six turns. Uh, so it's just those things that uh, take a little bit of time that I can just click and then not have to worry about. Like a spy in here would be fine. These cities are working on other things as well. So yeah, all my cities are kind of just working in the background. All of these other cities have things queued up for quite a little bit of time, so I don't have to micromanage as much. All my units are on sleep, so that all I have to do is uh, click the things I need to, like getting new governor titles, which I have every governor title, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, most governors and most of their promotions, all the ones I need at least, uh, but I can just go ahead and click some random ones at this point and keep clicking next turn. In this last turn, I bought two great people um, and I still have 6,000 gold in the bank. I have tons of money. I've been just raking in every turn. Uh, so I'm able to get these guys uh, and have some sculptures and stuff come out of these guys really quickly, as well as a great musician. Um, and then just, again, just making these guys do something miscellaneous. Uh, I got a city attack. Oh, some barbarians. Hello, barbarians. That'd be great to you to feel cannon for fun. And uh, let's see, is there any other great people I want to buy? Nothing I can buy currently. Okay, that's good to note. But um, I am now only 15 turns away. Uh, it went up and up, so I need to make sure I'm still working and getting a bunch of stuff for tourism and that nothing's lagging. So unfortunately, I figured out that India is actually sending me rock bands, so I'm actually going to pop in this card called Music Censorship. It actually blocks other players from entering your territory with rock bands so that they don't steal culture from you, uh, tourists from you. Um, but I do get minus one amenities in all my cities with 10 population or more, which is fine, but that's okay. But now this rock band that India has sent over now gets pushed away, and now I don't have to deal with them taking all my tourism. And that was probably what that hiccup was and why I got pushed back in some of my tourism a little bit ago. All right, this is going to be our na last national park. We actually had it on uranium, which is pretty funny. Uh, so we're going to be establishing it there. We could do another one up here, but I think we're just going to do that one there. There's some barbarians up there. I just don't want to mess with it. And I think this is probably going to be my last turn as well. Um, I have, let's see, I have 293 out of 293 uh, tourists and uh, 1,200 tourism per turn. Uh, tons of tourism. Let's look at our tourism lens. Bam, let's get see this. 54 tourism per turn. Uh, 69 tourism turn per turn. Nice. Um, let's see, we got tons of tourism here. Let's go ahead and look at Tiny Dancer. We have so much coming from this Acropolis. We have 18 from the Amphitheater, 45 from the Archaeology Museum, and 24 coming from the Broadcast Center. So much tourism per turn. Uh, we got the, uh, the Hermitage, which is great, generating quite a bit as well. It's generating, uh, 49 there. Uh, more, yeah, no, 49. Uh, you got, uh, 9 just from our great, uh, from Tiny Dancer. 3 from this Colossal Head. Uh, you got four from this entertainment complex and another 39, uh, 49 from Bolshoi Theater. So getting things like Lost of Heads are really important. They help you get that little bit of tourism and you can get them early on in the game. That helps out uh, and helps excel your game. And there you have it. The victory screen. There we go. It's not measured by its accomplishments. It's in how those accomplishments last and how they are remembered. The beauty that you have inspired our people to create will ensure that our culture stands Perfect. We got Hercules there. We did really well that game, especially in terms of, uh, I think, building constructed. We did a lot of, uh, so culture, look at that. The AI couldn't touch us there. Uh, they're pretty low throughout the whole thing. Player gold, I just had a lot of gold throughout the whole thing. Uh, science, I actually caught up there at the end. I could have gotten a science victory out of this one too if I really wanted. My player score, I actually beat the AI. I, mean, I usually don't do that too often, but my player score is pretty high. Um, let's see, um, let's see, Wonders Constructed. Uh, I was actually pretty low. I didn't get a lot of Wonders until the very end, until I started getting things important, like, uh, things like Sydney Opera House, Bull Shore Theater, Hermitage, things that give us good, um, great work slots and culture and tourism, too. So that was really helpful, and it really helped out us in Tiny Dancer. Tiny Dancer really helped out with, uh, that, because we had Pengala in there, who was getting the, uh, 100% bonus, too. So, uh, let's see, what else do we want to see? I don't think there's too much else. Number of combats, I don't think I had many at all. Uh, it was just mainly barbarians that I had combats with. Cities lost. Uh, so who lost all these? I think it was all uh, of the Polish Empire. Yeah, they lost a lot of cities. So uh, great people earned. I earned a lot, especially towards the end. No one really was going for great artists, um, great writers, or great musicians. So it was actually pretty easy for me, culturally-wise, to excel really quickly. Uh, so that was really awesome. 
Um, let's go ahead and do just one more turn. One of the things I probably would have done differently in this is probably gotten those colossal heads up a lot sooner. That way I could have navigated and got up a lot of culture quicker uh, and tourism quicker so that I could ensure that I got a quicker uh, tourism win and cultural win here because there's a, a lot of downtime where I just was not doing too many builders or anything like that. And there's the opportunity for colossal heads to be put all over my empire. Um, and, and there's some other things that I probably should have done a little bit different here. Um, saving up a lot more faith would have been helpful for me because it was a slow grind for those national parks. If I was able to get them up instantaneously as I got conservation, this probably would have been a turn 250, uh, sub 250. So I probably would have been around 230, 240. Um, there's a couple of optimizations that I should have done, but I had a, a lot of fun with this. This is a Civ I've never played with before. I love that um, that unique 5% uh, uh, culture per city state you were suzerain of. And the fact that we had so many suzerainties here really helped out uh, that we really weren't having too many issues at all uh, getting that. Because you can see here, we almost had 2,000 culture per turn. Uh, we were getting net plus 90% because of not only that we were suzerain, but our uh, policy cards as well, where you have something like uh, uh, collective activism. So it was a really fun game. Um, I would like to thank you guys all for watching and supporting the series and watching it to the very end. Uh, I hope you guys have a great one and I'll catch you in the next series. Thank you guys. Bye.